What's the meaning of that line? So first line says a string is a valid parenthesis string and they have given a short form called as VPS for that valid parenthesis string and if it meets one of the following conditions. Okay, the first condition says is that string should be empty. Okay, if the string is empty, as you can see, if the string is empty, just an empty string, it will be a valid parenthesis string. Or it is a single character which is not equal to an open parenthesis or a closing parenthesis. So it should be a any character. It, it can be any character A, B, C, D, but that character should not be either an open or a close. Then that is a valid parenthesis for us. Okay, if I have an open and if I have a close only, then it is not a valid parenthesis. Okay, this is the first point, what it means. Second point, it can be written as AB, which means the above one, which I have realized, okay, if I have realized that A and congruent where A and B are VPS. So I have realized by the above fact, point one, that any string which follows this and this, it will be a valid string or a valid VPS, valid parenthesis string. So I will say that if I concatenate to VPS, that will also be a VPS. So if I have, let's say empty string, I can get it with another empty string, that will, be, that, that will be a VPS. Empty string, another character A, that will be a VPS. A with another character A will also be a VPS. A with another character B will also be a VPS. So you can see, AB is a VPS. But Arjun, what have you written here itself? You said now opening and closing bracket will not be a VPS. Oh, yeah, that is true. So, but like this, this fact, this fact which I've written here, this will come from point three because I've said it can follow any one of the following points. So point three simply says that it can be written as bracket. And in those bracket, I can put in the character A, where A is a VPS. So by the above fact, by, by the point one, if I say, okay, instead of A, I put an empty string. So bracket, only brackets, opening, closing brackets, as you can see, opening, closing brackets will be a VPS. And between those brackets, opening, closing, if I put A as nothing but a character A, then it will also be a VPS. So these two also will be a VPS, which means opening, closing bracket and something inside opening, closing bracket. Again, the inside thing should also be a VPS. And so I can simply also say that, okay, that A is nothing but opening, closing and this inside A, it should be a VPS. So VPS can be anything. It can be empty, it can be A, it can be another AB, it can be opening, closing, opening, closing, and it can be another bracket itself. So I can just simply put in this also. So inside thing should be a VPS. So if I come back on the point two, I, I said that, okay, I can catenate two VPS. As I can see that open closing bracket is a VPS. So for sure I can concatenate them. So this is what we have realized that it is simply nothing but for every opening bracket I should find a oh, I should find a closing bracket corresponding to that and that will simply be a VPS. These all points simply say this one thing. By pattern we can simply check this out. Right? Okay. Again, that's as I said, it is unnecessarily complicated. So uh, if we go on back, we can see that we can simplify define we can simply define the nesting depth. Now they have defined the nesting depth. I'll simply tell that, okay, if something is empty, there is no depth for it. The depth is zero. If I have only the character character, then also the depth is zero. Again, that character should not be a opening or closing. See, I always say it should not be a opening or closing. Now, if I have a depth A and B, let's say if I have two strings which I can calculate it, then I will take whosoever has a maximum depth. For example, as you can see that this, this portion, it will give again by by going on to point four first. I will say that any character or basically any VPS if you add a opening and closing bracket, this opening and closing to that specific VPS A will give a depth of one. So I can just directly infer that any opening and closing bracket will actually for that group will infer a depth of one. Will infer a depth of one. And again, I'll show you by the example number three. So example number three validates that. That okay, you have an opening closing bracket which will infer depth of one. Again, inside that you have an opening closing bracket which will again infer again addition of depth of one. So this will give you a depth of two. Now, next opening closing bracket are outside the previous depth. Outside the previous depth. So this will give you give you a depth of another one. So if I have to ask you what is the what is the entire depth of this? You will take the maximum. By the formula, you will take the maximum out of A and B. Then you will get 
okay depth is 2 which is the maximum depth which you can have now coming on that they have given a few examples that okay bro what is okay empty string opening closing opening closing then opening closing then opening 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 closing opening closing and then closing so that's that example of valid parenthesis string and we have also seen okay for every again by this we realized that for every opening bracket we should have a corresponding closing bracket and this point two which means the entire uh, paragraph two represents how we calculate that opening and closing bracket depths now we have to give it a string represented by s you have to return the nested depth of s so for sure we realize that we have to count we have to count okay for every opening bracket we have a closing bracket and then as my as i am okay i have a opening 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 closing 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 so as my entire portion of consecutive opening and closing is actually increasing that will be my maximum now let's see with the help of an example for example if we take this so firstly we will have this opening bracket okay we have the opening bracket then we will have another opening bracket okay another opening bracket and then we okay again you see that i'm ignoring all the other characters i'm ignoring all the because it doesn't matter for me i just only want the opening and the closing brackets then another closing bracket okay another closing bracket so i really will say i and i have found one depth but i'll say no bro if you see a high level picture this this actually has given you a depth of two because it is actually also bounded by this bracket so this opening closing bracket is inside another opening and closing bracket so i have to also infer that at what depth he is he was at the second depth when he closed he was at the second depth when he closed but aryan what if what if this is not even a closed this is not even a closed bracket so he will not be in the second depth anyway which means i'm saying that it is not even a valid parenthesis but the actual thing in the problem is itself that it is guaranteed that the parenthesis expression s is a vps so i for sure know if i have an opening bracket here i will for sure be having a corresponding closing bracket so whenever I'm saying okay, I am at depth and I'm closing out something. I know one thing for sure that okay, if I'm closing out, it is correct closing which is taking place. So I'll simply say that when I had here, I had an opening, then again I'm at this point where I had an opening and then I had closing. But then once the closing closing came in, I realized, bro, for sure closing is coming in. I should see whatever maximum I had, that will be the depth I will have. So right now the maximum depth is 2. I will initialize my answer by 2. Because initially the answer will be 0. I have to maximize my depth. So answer will become to 2. Then again, this will close away. Okay, now comes another opening bracket. Okay, another opening bracket. Then comes another opening bracket. Okay, another opening bracket. Then comes a closing bracket. Oh, closing bracket is coming in. Which means, which means, Okay, so far the depth would have been 3. So far the depth would have been 3. Now, okay, great. Another closing bracket came in. Okay, I'll just simply close the first one. Another closing bracket came in. I'll simply close the next one. Another closing bracket came in. I'll close the next one. Now, you can simply see your answer is 3. So, you have, whenever you're about to close, you will see, okay, how many opening packets are available. That will show you, okay, what would have been the depth at that specific closing point cool and that is the only crux which you have to solve but the main point for this problem was that it is guaranteed that the expression is a valid parenthesis string now the code will be will look pretty simple that uh, as as you, as you simply saw that i will simply have a stack again just to make sure if something is opening corresponding closing i am taking for it again same can achieve with vector also both perform the exact same stuff now you will have opening you will simply push that in the stack as you will encounter your closing you will have to quickly check you have to maximize your answer you will check what is the existing stack size that will show the existing depth and you will actually maximize your answer and ultimately you can simply pop it out your closing bracket and you can simply see that you are doing it in o of n time and space but you are using a stack so space in worst case can also be o of n ideally in case, it can be o of n by 2 but yeah it can be o of n can we improvise it but before improvising can we see that it was actually not required for us itself that we will keep this specific the specific portion if we keep the specific portion inside our else loop it is not required because ideally what i am doing ideally i know one thing that for every opening bracket that for every again let, let me raise this for every opening bracket i will for sure encounter closing bracket so I can simply keep on saying, okay, bro, opening bracket, opening bracket, okay, 
Although for every closing bracket, I will remove an opening bracket in, from the stack itself. But I can simply say, nah, I only want the count of it. Okay, in the very beginning, I have one. So I can initialize and say, okay, so far my answer is one because I for sure know it will bring in the closing bracket because it's a valid VPS. So I can initialize and I can increase my answer one by itself. Okay, next time opening bracket came in. Okay, opening bracket came in. I will say, okay, answer is two. Then again, uh, closing bracket came in. So this bracket will go in. So answer has become like stack has become one. So I can again I have to maximize it. So this will still remain two. Again, now opening bracket came in. Okay, opening bracket answer will still remain two. Opening bracket, okay, answer will become three. Again, closing bracket, okay, closing bracket, again a closing bracket, again a closing bracket, again a closing, again a closing. So answer will not be increased, it will be decreasing anyway. So maximum answer is still at three. So you saw that it is never bounded. Okay, when I'm closing, then only I will do a count increase because I know for sure. Even if I have opening right now, I will be getting a closing in future. So I can simply put this condition outside my else loop also because I know it is not necessary that I will get it get a closing. I will for sure get a closing. So when I am for sure for a specific thing, I can put this specific condition out. Now R in but still the time and space are still O of n, O of n. Yeah, true. But the fact is now that you only needed to know how many number of the close opening bracket were there and okay for sure that is true that obviously that as soon as you encounter a closing bracket you will have to decounter or basically decounter it and say okay number of opening you had I will reduce by one as soon as I have got a closing bracket because that has form up here. What you realize from this fact you realize from this fact is that ideally nothing as of stack is being used. I'm just actually this stack dot size is nothing but how many opening brackets are there currently? How many opening brackets are there currently? So why I do why why do I need a stack for this? I don't. I will simply take a variable count of opening brackets right now. As soon as I will encounter opening bracket, I will increase my count. Encounter closing bracket, I will decrease my count, and then I will keep on the count and will try to maximize my answer with this. I can simply solve it in again. Time will still be taken O of n because I have n characters in the string but the space will be open because now we are using a variable rather than using a stack and that's how you can solve it cool again it's a competition problem uh i don't like this problem but yes still that's how it is cool bye bye take care see ya and if you're not watching the video you can just go and watch the video in the comment section bye bye